Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. We're here at the Claremont Collection in Chicago, Illinois. I'm here with my buddy Andrew Vogel. Good to see you, Lou. Andrew the Vice President of Marketing and Sales here at the Claremont Collection. And Andrew, first of all, share with us, what is the Claremont Collection? Right, right. It's a special place. We're a private automobile museum in the city of Chicago. I say private because you're going to want to see this, but you can't. Uh, unless you're a big group and then come see us. But Lou's here to, to, uh, to show us a few cars. But um, we're 100,000 square feet on two floors, mm -hmm. over 300 automobiles um, of some significance, uh, spanning 100 years. You'll love this. So, But today we have a really special one for you. What are we showing today? This is a 1926 Hispano Suiza. Uh, wow. it's, uh, it's an unusual car, unusual manufacturer, only around in the first part of the 20th century. Uh, and they made 2,300 cars. Um, all very expensive, the, and the, the fastest, most expensive cars in all of Europe uh, for the entire span from about 1919 really? till the mid-30s. Uh, big deal automobiles, and this one is especially unusual. There were only two of these cars made, so let's take a look. I'm going to grab the cameras I usually do. Thanks, Joey. So um, here we have the car, and it's a large vehicle. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, so here we have a, a, a large four-door sedan. For the day, it was a big deal. Remember, we're talking 1926 again. And so we have, we have arc lights for headlights, not electric. We have a six-volt electric system. We have a car that was very much hand-built. Uh, as I said, there were only two of these made. What makes this particular model, this is the model H6B, as in Bravo. Um, but there were only two made like this with this particular body. Now you see all the details there, terrific hood ornament as they often did in the day. But when you get around to, to, the, uh, to the side of the car too, we'll see some further um, interesting things. But yeah, look at the detail in the headlights there. Even in the center below, the, uh, below that reflector, you see that nice placard there. It's just gorgeous. Look at this. Look at even the crank here is... Just spectacular. There's where the license plate would be and the massive springs down here. And you see they used a, uh, a sort of a vinyl of yeah, sorts. Yeah, this is a... Uh, it predates vinyl, but it, but it was a vinyl of sorts. Uh, yeah, uh, look at that. There to just keep the, the splash the guard whole, effect. On the whole fender there. Now, the reason for that yeah. is the same reason as the body. The body of this vehicle is completely different from any other car we're going to see. You see the, the bonnet here is, is metal as it would be, right? Yeah. Here, it's metal, but covered in leather, huh. right? So that's just a hint of what's to come. After the firewall, we see leather in a frame, but then if you touch it, wait a minute, what's going on here? There's nothing. There's just a, a skeletal frame here and wrapped in leather. As we continue further back, yeah, son of a gun, the doors are all leather, wood wow. framed and then leather. Now you say, well, why would you do that? Well, speed. They wanted speed. And how do you get speed? Horsepower and weight. We want as little weight as possible, as much horsepower as we can. And the combination made them one of the fastest cars on the planet in 1926. Wow. Okay. Let me get an overall shot of the side yeah, of the yeah. car before I go too far. Come on. Come on back with me there. There you go. Still moving back just a tad. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a very much. long wheelbase, as you can see. There's not a whole lot of vehicle um, uh, in front of the front axle or behind the rear axle, which also made for a terrific There's a center of gravity scenario. Um, what's what's right here? Uh, those would be uh, tools, typically, in there. Okay. Is that? It, it'll come up here. Hang okay. on. I'll get the other one if you want to lift it out. I'll take care of it. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I got it was it. just for All right, whatever yeah. needed to be stored there. Okay, compartment area. Look at that. Mm -hmm. All the metal spokes. Let's, uh, Andrew, open the door, please. Uh-huh. Swap places with you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at what the driver sees. This car had, a, had one owner for over 50 years. Oh, wow. It was said that even Etzel Ford owned one of these cars. Not this particular one, but one of these H6Bs, uh, and was seen tooling around Gross Point Shores in one of these cars. But really, only for the rich and famous, because they were ridiculously expensive at the end of the day.
instrumentation is beautiful, very aircraft-like, as cars in the day were. And everything you see beyond, you see the gauges with the beveled glass on all the gauges. Wow. Some cars, Andrew, when we're doing them, quite honestly, people who've watched my car story have probably said, Lou, it would be nice if we can hear something other than you talking. Cars like this, I just don't have anything to say. <laughs> it just says yes. it all itself. I mean, the beautiful, look at the way the door latch is on the inside. And yeah, you know, some elements are very simple and some very complex. Look at the, look at the door on this side. Just very simple, like you said. Go ahead. Yeah, it's so simple, and yet some of the elements are, are complex like an aircraft in the day. And that was the engineering side of things. And they were uh, complicated to drive uh, and complicated simply to keep running. They, they were a, a, a very tricky engineering feat yeah. uh, to get an automobile running like this. Now, here, this one, as we were talking about, was built for speed, mm -hmm. but it only has one set of brakes, only the rear has Ooh. brakes. The front wheels do not have brakes yet. They hadn't come that far. There's your braking system there. Just a, just a mechanical drum. And again, yeah. we see more of this leather covered. Mm -hmm. There's actually a, a plate there, which maybe the high def camera can pull out. You want some light on that? No, you know, I think I'm okay. That'll probably be the the first time that's ever been actually viewed by a person. <laughs> so, well, look at the tail lights. How, how they're beautifully crafted. And yet, here's the overall back of the car. Like so. Andrew, actually, I like you standing in there because you're like a full-size human being. So I need, I need like perspective yeah. this is great so there it is you see it's, it's about six feet or so. yeah um, terrific convertible top um, and you know what we didn't really see so far is the, the rear compartment passenger compartment it was really a limousine it was designed for comfort as much as one could be in the day that's a lot of room that's a lot of room and kind of the plastic back window. Yep. Let's take a look under the hood. I always like to see both sides of these cars because both sides are so unique. Right. So here we have. Is that heavy or not heavy? Uh, it's pretty heavy, yeah. Okay, the reason why I asked that because I know the top of it was leather. Y yeah, but leather over metal. Of course, yeah. it has to be metal because of the heat. Look at the belt. Right. Holy cow, is that? Yeah, so we have a, we have an inline six. Wow. And you see all that polished metal. And this goes for the exterior as well. Everything you see that's polished is nickel. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, because they, they hadn't come up with chrome yet. So it's really polished nickel. That's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at the other side. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. While well, Andrew's doing that, I'm, and he's going to open that, I'm going to f put this here so you can kind of get some of the details that you might like on this car. That's so you can great. see the company was really an amalgamation of of, uh, uh, of two entrepreneurs and their ideas and, and dreams for an automobile from the Spanish and the Swiss. And so you have the flair of the Spanish, if you will, and yeah. the precision of the Swiss, and the two came together to make these amazing automobiles. First World War, they also made aircraft engines. Wow, look at that. The spark plugs are right there. An aircraft engine. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, let's shut the... Uh... Let's shut that, and Andrew will have you stand right next to it. There we go. 
Well, you know, Andrew, uh, you and I were talking, nothing beats a Hispano Suiza. <laughs> <laughs> or something similar. Either. Something right. similar yeah, to that. Right. Yeah. Wow, Andrew, exactly. thanks for uh, uh, letting us see your very unique ride here That's at true. the Claremont Collection. And uh, this would be a crown jewel of anyone's collection, and yet it's just one of the amazing cars here. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing more of your cars, but more importantly, thanks for letting us see this special car. Terrific, always. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming out.